Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we will analyze NVIDIA to evaluate the feasibility of its stock as a long-term value investment. NVIDIA trades under the ticker symbol NVDA. NVIDIA has been a lot in the news lately and has received a strong buy rating by analysts on tip ranks. Also, the sentiment is extremely positive, which can be gauged from the fact that on tip ranks, the blogger's opinions reveal a sentiment score of 95% as compared to the sector average of just 71% and the investors also like the Nvidia stock. Furthermore, also the new sentiment is extremely bullish and is currently 100% bullish which is insane. Therefore, I had to cover the Nvidia stock so that we can look at the Nvidia stock from a long-term value investment centric perspective without getting caught in the hype. I believe it is always better to do our research so that we don't end up paying more for the value that we are getting while investing. Before we go ahead, nothing in this video is an investment advice. I am not a financial advisor and in this video I am just sharing my own opinions about the Nvidia stock as a long-term value investment. But before analyzing the stock in detail, I will first provide an overview of the NVIDIA stock. So according to Wikipedia, NVIDIA Corporation is an American multinational technology company which is incorporated in Delaware and based in Santa Clara, California. Its main focus areas are the design of graphical processing units for the gaming and professional markets, as well as system on a chip units, SOCs, for the mobile computing and automotive market. Its primary GPU line labeled GeForce is in direct competition with the GPUs of the Radeon brand by Advanced Micro Devices AMD. According to TipRanks, NVIDIA Corporation designs and manufactures computer graphics processors, chipsets and related multimedia software. Now the company operates through two segments. The first segment is called graphics segment which includes GeForce GPUs or graphics processing units for gaming and PCs. The GeForce Now game streaming service and related infrastructure and solutions for gaming platforms. Cordro GPUs for enterprise design, grid software for cloud-based visual and virtual computing as well as automotive platforms for infotainment systems. The second segment is called compute and networking segment which includes data center platforms and systems for artificial intelligence high performance computing and accelerated computing, Mellanox networking and interconnect solutions, drive for autonomous vehicles and Jetson for robotics and other embedded platforms. Now let's analyze the Nvidia stock through our 14 value centric dimensions to evaluate its feasibility as a long term value investment. For those of you who are new to this channel, I'm Dr. Sabir Khan. I'm a business strategist, experienced investor, award winning scientist and also held the business owners as a coach and sales mentor. I will also be interested to see how much score we get out of 100 for the Nvidia stock. So as always, I will also be interested to see if we can get a score of over 75% over the time frames of 3, 5 and 10 years and see the parallel or correlation between our feasibility analysis and the opinion of analysts. In other words, I will be interested in seeing how well our dimensions converge to the same conclusion as the analysts who have given it a strong buy rating on tip ranks. So for those of you who don't know, TipRanks is an awesome tool and I use it all the time to look at the most trending stocks and what analysts are saying about it. But I also have my own criteria which I use to shortlist stocks and the whole point is to give you that unbiased opinion over here. Later on, if our dimensional analysis validates its feasibility as a good long-term value investment, we will look at the current state of the market through the lens of six critical dimensions to gauge if it is the right time to accumulate Nvidia stock or shall we wait for the market to offer it to us for a cheaper price. So let's go ahead and first analyze the Nvidia stock via the 14 dimensions of value-centric investment feasibility. So looking at the numbers, the current price of NVIDIA stock is 232 US dollars. Its current market cap is 569 billion US dollars. The PE ratio over the trailing 12 months is 80.4. The PEG ratio over the trailing 12 months is 2.5. The earnings per share over the trailing 12 months is 1.73. The current price to book ratio is 26.9. And the current price to sales ratio is 26.9 while the current price to free cash flow ratio is 
And looking over a time frame of 10 years, the average revenue each year was 12%. The average asset growth each year was 16%, while the average equity growth was 16% and the average net income growth was 80% while the average liability growth was 19%. And looking over a time frame of 5 years, the average revenue growth each year was around 20%, the average asset growth was around 20% and the average equity growth was around 23% while the average net income growth was 51%, while the average liability growth was 14%. And now looking at the last three years, the average revenue growth was 18%, the average asset growth was 21%, the average equity growth was 28%, the average net income growth was 29%, and the average liability growth was 9%. So now we look at the key graphs, ratios, and percentages to get a good view of the company's performance over different time frames. So we can see that the total revenue as well as net income has been increasing over the past 10 years and past 3 years also except a minor drop in 2014 and 2020 as we can see over here. Which is fine since the drops were not drastic and also sometimes the companies change their strategic direction and make some changes to their products and services as well as technology platforms to remain relevant and that can reflect in their total revenue and net revenues too. So looking at the graph of total assets over total liabilities, it shows that the assets have always been more than liabilities and same is the case of total current assets and total current liabilities graph. They both are always above one for the last 10 years which shows the financial strength of the company. And both of them have always been above two for the last five years and also over the last three years. And looking at the PE ratio, price to book ratio and price to sales ratio, I focus on PE ratio most of the times since it shows me the number of years it will take for the earnings of the share to add up and become equal to the current stock price. So it is a good way to see how much value we are getting by buying a stock. So for me a PE ratio of 20 is the ceiling. I will never pay more than 20 times the earnings per share over the trailing 12 months for the price of the stock. Yes, of course, earning can increase in future and people can be bullish on the potential of the products and services of the company. But we know that at the same time, a blue ocean can emerge and sink the ship in the same way as Apple and Samsung sank the ship of Nokia's mobile phone business. So we must look at the things through the lens of reality and base decisions on current situation. So the stock has almost never been on discount for the last 5 years and the last 3 years. If we look over the last 3 years, we can see that the PE ratio was 48, 21 and 51, which shows that for some months in 2019, it was okay to buy the Nvidia stock, but overall it was mostly not on sale during the past 3 years. And as far as the key growth rates are concerned, they all have remained positive over the last 5 years and total assets have been growing almost as fast as total liabilities. Also even though the growth is similar in total assets and total liabilities, there is nothing to worry about since we already saw that the total assets are always more than the total liabilities over the time frames of 3, 5 and 10 years. And as far as the ROE and ROIC are concerned, they have always remained over 10% over the last 5 years and over the last 3 years which shows the strength of the company as a value creation machine and the competence of its management is evident from these graphs. And now looking at the gross, EBITDA and operating margins, we can see that the gross margins shown by the blue graph are over 50% and then over 60% in the last 5 years and last 3 years respectively. And now looking at the EBITDA margins and net margins, so the EBITDA margins and net margins have both remained over 15% in the last 5 years and over 25% in the last 3 years. This shows that the company's products are perceived as valuable and Nvidia is competitive in its industry. And as far as the diluted shares outstandings are concerned, they increased from 2016 to 2017 and decreased from 2018 till 2020. And now let's have a look at the overall score of the 14 value centric dimensions over the last 10 years, the last 5 years and the last 3 years. These scores show the feasibility of the stock as a long term value investment 
over different time frames. Feel free to pause the video if you want to look at each one of these dimensions or any specific dimensions out of them and the results of those. So over the past 10 years, we get an outstanding score of 86%. Over the last five years, we get an amazing score of 93%. And over the last three years, we again get the same brilliant score of 93%, which is outstanding in an industry which is evolving very fast. And new innovations are shaping the products and services available to users rapidly as the trends and technologies evolve. So we conclude that the result of our dimensional analysis is in agreement with the opinions of analysts about the NVIDIA stock. Therefore, since we look at an overall score of over 75% and the NVIDIA stock has managed to achieve a mind-blowing score of 86%, 93% and again 93% over the time frames of 10, 5 and 3 years, we believe the Nvidia stock is a great value investment. The high feasibility score shows its strength as a market leader in its domain. Now of course the fundamentals are excellent, but before our purchasing decision, we need to ask ourselves the question, is it the right time to buy the Nvidia stock or shall we wait? So as you know, if you are subscribed to this channel, before we press the trigger, we look at the state of the market and see the price, sentiment and hedge fund activity to see if it is the right time to buy or shall we wait. In other words, we look at the six dimensions of market state before making a final purchasing decision. So for that, let's go to tip ranks and let's investigate. So the first thing which I look on tip ranks is the PE ratio range. So over here we can see that in 2019, the PE ratio range was 61.55 to 32.78, which is quite huge. In 2020, the PE ratio range was between 95 around that to around 32. And in 2021, the PE ratio range so far has been between around 67 and around 34. Since there are still a few months to go in 2021, therefore we might see this P-E ratio range widening even further. So normally when we purchase a stock, we look at a P-E ratio of less than 20. But in this case, we see that the NVIDIA stock has never been on discount in the past three years. So as far as the analyst rating consensus is concerned, 28 ratings were there in tip ranks. So out of 28, 26 ratings are a buy, one is a hold and one is a sell. So we get a strong buy rating from analysts on tip ranks. And as far as the price of the Nvidia stock is concerned, we can see that it is at an all time high right now. So I'm never going to buy the Nvidia stock at such a high price and I will let the price to correct. And here is what the smart money is doing. And we can see that the hedge fund managers agree with what I said. So we can see that as the price was going up and up and up, the hedge funds were offloading the Nvidia stock because why would they not take profits? Of course they will take profits. And this is exactly what they are doing. So the smart money is not impressed with all the hype that is around the Nvidia stock. In fact, they are selling when the sentiment is very positive and everybody is enthusiastic and happy about the stock. So the smart money always goes the opposite way as the retail investors and this is a classical example of that. And now let's have a look at the insiders trading. So this graph is even more awesome. So we can see that the magnitude of sell transactions is increasing as compared to the buy transactions. Therefore, insiders also believe that the stock is really overpriced right now. And let me clarify that NVIDIA is an amazing company. But right now, the stock is really overpriced. We have seen the PE ratio. We have seen the price chart. We have seen what the hedge fund managers are doing, what the smart money is doing. And we have also seen what the insiders are doing. And there is nothing wrong in taking profits. Anyone will do the same in this situation if they have investment acumen. Therefore, as far as the six dimensions of market state are concerned, we only get a score of 33% as we have seen. 
Therefore, the low score of 33% for the current market state suggests that it is not the right time to buy. And of course, it has great value proposition, outstanding fundamentals. But I will accumulate when the market presents an opportunity where the stock is on sale. And then I will make it a part of my portfolio over time with dollar cost averaging. Buying a stock at all time highs is something which an amateur investor will do, but not something which savvy investors do, no matter how much the hype. They there are other companies and other options on the market that will provide a good value for the money that we will pay for their stock currently. It is our job to look for them and analyze them before investing. Thank you very much for your time, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that you enjoyed the content in this video. I post such videos regularly each week. Please subscribe, press the notifications bell and select the options all so that you can get the notifications of future videos in time. Thank you very much. Bye bye and take care. Bye.